I think it's really important that we do our job as a Congress, that we not allow misconduct to go undeterred, that we not just say someone can violate the public trust and that there are no consequences to it. And if, if you get a chance, I encourage you all to read uh, the tweet where it lays all of this out. Mueller's report lays all of this out. And uh, I'm confident that if you read volume two, you will be appalled at much of the conduct. And, um, and I was appalled by it. And, um, and that's why I stated what I stated. That's why I came to that conclusion, because I think we can't go, we can't let conduct like that go unchecked. Congress has a duty to keep the president in check, and it is a difficult process. For those who are worried about, um, you know, Congress intruding on the president's powers consistently, it is a difficult process to remove someone from office. It's not easy. So no one's suggesting that just because you start some inquiry or process that a person's removed from office. Nonetheless, we have a job to do. And I think we owe it to the American people to, uh, to represent them, to ensure that the people we have in office are doing the right thing, are of good character, aren't violating the public trust. This is Republican Congressman Justin Amash, the first Republican lawmaker to call for Trump's impeachment. And while those in his own party have been quick to lambast the Michigan Republican for failing to blindly tow the party line, the voters in his district paint a much different picture, which is a Republican lawmaker in a decidedly Republican district getting an ovation from the crowd after defending his position that Trump should be impeached. If that isn't a massive call to action for other Republicans tired of relinquishing every ounce of their dignity as they fall over themselves to line up behind Trump? Nothing is. Amash has taken to Twitter on multiple occasions to explain his rationale for impeachment, most recently taking aim at Trump's Attorney General Bill Barr for so glaringly misrepresenting Mueller's report. He said that Barr has so far successfully used his position to sell the president's false narrative to the American people. This will continue if those who have read the report do not start pushing back on his misrepresentations and share the truth. And Amash has been consistent in using the fact that he's actually read the Mueller report to silence his critics most of whom didn't even bother to do so. In fact, Republicans began publicly absolving Trump of guilt before the report was even released, not only decimating their credibility, but proving that it was never going to be about the facts actually laid out in the report. Mueller's report itself has been devastating for Trump, outlining both clear-cut instances of cooperation between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin to help Trump win, as well as 10 instances of obstruction of justice. But that hasn't stopped Trump's mouthpieces like Bill Barr and Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell and Sarah Huckabee Sanders from crowing that somehow that means Trump is exonerated. Among their favorite talking points is that because Mueller opted not to indict Trump, that he's absolved of all guilt. But that's wrong on two fronts. First, Mueller specifically gave Congress the power to use the information compiled in his investigation to decide whether or not to take action against Trump. Mueller wrote in his report that with respect to whether the president can be found to have obstructed justice, Congress has authority to prohibit a president's corrupt use of his authority. That Congress may apply the obstruction laws to the president's corrupt exercise of the powers of office. So to claim that Mueller is the final word in all of this is quite literally ignoring Mueller's own words that it's up to Congress. And second, DOJ guidance is that a sitting president cannot be indicted. So those claiming that because Mueller didn't do something that he couldn't do under the purview of the DOJ under which he was operating, that that means that Trump is innocent are doing so in bad faith. And look, there are literally dozens of impeachable offenses here. Of the 10 instances of obstruction of justice, why even one has been deemed acceptable by the GOP shows just how far the party has fallen. But that's not the point. The point is that Trump's party has become just that, a cult of personality, complicit in his criminal behavior by virtue of failing to stand up to him. And it didn't used to be this way. Here's what Republicans thought of Trump before they hitched their wagons to him. He's a race baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. He doesn't represent my party. He doesn't represent the values that the men and women who wear the uniform are fighting for. 
And what Mr. Trump is doing is undercutting everything we stand for. He's undercutting how you win the war. He's empowering the enemy, and he's putting people at risk who are serving our country. Now, he's never served. Going to a military high school, Donald, is really not military service. You've never worn the uniform. You've never been uh, on a, a Ford operating base. You've never been at a PRT as a member of the Department of Justice or the Department of State. You've never been a USAID worker going into some devastated poor area in Iraq and Afghanistan trying to help our country by helping others. So knock it off. You're putting people at risk. I'm going to tell you what I really think of Donald Trump. This man is a pathological liar. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. It's completely transparent. Donald Trump's tax returns aren't. I'd like to see those be transparent. And people start to see that he's not, he says he's for the little guy, but he's actually built a lot of his businesses on the backs of the little guy. And he's a lot of little guys through eminent domain or through uh -huh. not paying um, contractors after you've built something. The little guys have you know, suffered. Except now, these same Republicans have handcuffed themselves to a devastatingly unpopular president who panders solely to his base. And that base might dominate the Republican Party, but that's not enough. The 2018 midterms are clear evidence that while Trump might be popular in the RNC's main convention hall and random diners in the middle of nowhere, he's become nothing short of a massive liability in national elections. And yet still Republicans are lining up behind him, more concerned with the short-sighted political benefits that come with him not attacking them on Twitter than they are with, you know, protecting democracy. The fact that Amash is the only Republican to call for his impeachment is evidence of that. And look, that's not to say that Amash doesn't have his flaws. He is a staunch conservative who votes with Trump 92% of the time. But what this does say is that it's not a necessity to hitch your wagon to Trump's if you want to be a Republican, to pretend that Mueller's report wasn't an absolute travesty for the White House, to adopt Trump's brand of juvenile schoolyard bullying, and to operate in complete bad faith when your side is so clearly in the wrong. You don't have to be perfectly aligned with Amash to acknowledge that he's taking a principled stand, and hopefully, making it easier for the next Republican to do the same. Whether they'll actually have the courage to do what many considered unthinkable, and yes, I'm talking about telling the truth, remains to be seen. But even the most spineless of Republicans should be able to watch reactions like this and realize that you just might not need to be completely beholden to Trump to succeed in the Republican Party.